Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. All right, let's bring in our good friend Rich Scarcello, Reading Eagle, who always gives incredible perspective. Sir, welcome back. It is great to have you with us. Steve, always good to be with you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, uh, this is another close one. Uh, I think close ones, of course, bear a lot of examination. Did we see some of the same things crop up, or did anything new crop up in a close loss? I think there was a lot of there were a lot of similar uh, things that happened Saturday that have happened in losses. Um, first and foremost, inability to run the football. Uh, effectively. Uh, second of all, and I I don't mean to kill the defense because the defense has been terrific all year, but in three of these five losses, they allowed big plays late in the or in the fourth quarter, meaning that um, you know big pass play at Iowa to the tight end, um, another pass to the tight end at Michigan, and of course uh, the pass to to read in the end zone uh, on fourth and fifteen. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it just it's you know, there were missed tackles, but that happens in games. But I, I really lay this squarely on the offense, this loss, and 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 really the other ones as well. Um, you know, just because when you can't run the ball, you're very limited on what you can do, and that's why I. I I agree with most of my colleagues on the beat that I, I, I think they, that Penn State needed to throw the ball more, even with the weather, because receivers were open and that Michigan State pass defense is not good. Yeah, I think they threw it, what, 34 times? I Technically 38 because of the four sacks. Um, mm-hmm. And they were, I think, 12 runs on first down, 13 passes, so one-to-one there, uh, as a matter yeah. of fact. And they were three of six on third and less than four in the game, which you know that's one we you need to just keep convert you know you need to keep converting, keeping drives alive, and keeping them off the field. Yeah, yeah, Stephen. I, and honestly, I, I I understand James Franklin's aim. Absolutely, big picture, you need to run the ball. You need to be balanced. But truth be told, this team's identity was established long ago with its inability to run the ball and it's been most effective when Sean, a healthy Sean Clifford has been able a somewhat healthy Sean Clifford's been able to throw the ball and you have one of the best receivers in the country in Jahan Dotson and obviously he got open twice early uh, you know made a sensational catch on the, on, on the touchdown um, yeah I just I think you needed uh, in the, I won't I'll say this in the fourth quarter on fourth and one and then even on second and one and third and one after a nine-yard gain by Lee, um, you need to do what you do best, and that's throw the ball. And and you, you, you put your strength against their weakness instead of your weakness against their strength. Yeah, and I thought it was a day, to be honest with you, I thought with the conditions, I thought Clifford threw the ball pretty well on Saturday. What did you think? Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought Sean played really well. And that play... You know, okay, somebody, you know, somebody might say it's meaningless, but that play on the last scoring drive when he circled back into oh. the end zone, running for his yep. life to his left, and completed the pass to Brenton Strange for a first down was one of the greatest individual efforts on a play that I can remember. It was phenomenal because he's in trouble. He should go down. He's rolling to the to his left, not his natural side. And in those conditions, he found the kid and was able to get to the 33-yard line. Is what they needed for a first round. It really was. It shows the no quit in him. Uh, you know, and let's let's be honest about. It. I mean, I don't think a lot of people realize Sean had 20 touchdown passes and only six interceptions yeah. this year. That's pretty darn good numbers. Steve, I know, and I'm glad we're talking about him because I don't. I, I like Sean Clifford. I like he is he is not the most talented quarterback. I think he's a really good quarterback, but and he gets everything that he has out of it. You know, you, 
he gives gives it his all. And there's no no question about that. And I know you're a numbers guy. He has thrown one interception in his last 231 attempts. That's that's tremendous. I mean, that is tremendous, and that's what you're looking for. That's what you're yeah. looking for. You're looking yeah. for three and a half. You know, three to one, three and a half to one, which is where he is now, or even as close as four to one as possible on touchdowns, interceptions. That's what he's doing. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the key is is that early, the first half of the season, and I think this does go a little bit to him being banged up. First mm-hmm. half of the season, he was effective as a runner, not so mm-hmm. much in the second half of the season, and that includes even the last couple of games. Yeah, I agree with that. And I thought. Yeah, I, I they ran him three times. I think I could be wrong on design plays in the first half. I know two of them yes. um, led to drives ending, and I I didn't didn't particularly care for those calls. But I but I I, I do want to say this about Sean. That's one interception since he was injured at Iowa. That's that's an yeah. that's an incredible number. I want to make sure that I got that across. Yeah, I think. I think he threw the ball well, and as he said after the game, he goes, look, I'll throw it any time. I mean, he wasn't throwing anybody under the bus by saying that. He was just making a point. He said, look, I'll, I'll do what I'm asked to do, and I'll throw it whenever, I, you know, every time if they ask me to do it. And, um, yeah, and I, I really I, – I still have to say that, yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen more of that in the fourth quarter. I mean, obviously, you, stood on, you saw it. He threw 11 times on the last drive. When, when Penn State was down by 10 points right, had to throw the ball but I mean even before that I would have liked to have seen him throw the ball more yeah no it's it's one of those where going in I thought maybe he might throw it 50 um, you know only because of the matchup with Michigan State yep. but I'll yep. say this yep. because, because of the interception by Hardy good thing for Penn State mm-hmm. Yep. and because of the love at fumble Penn State only had nine possessions in the game. Yeah. Michigan State had twelve, and I, I think that's something yeah. that, you know, the, the the you know they didn't get as many possessions to run stuff either. No, and they had they had that first drive in the uh, third quarter, and it stalled. And then Michigan State, I mean, that includes the the Hardy interception return for the touchdown. Right, it seemed like the Michigan State offense was on the field for about an hour, and. Um, and I don't know what it was. I, I forget the exact time. You probably know this, but I know Penn State didn't get the offense, didn't get the ball back again until late in the third quarter. Right, exactly. So, I mean, they only had nine possessions in the game. That's yeah. because of the turnovers. It's, it's, in the end, the turnovers yeah. are what killed them in the game. Those two turnovers actually the, that was Huge. what really did Penn State in yes. as the yes. factors in the game. Very, very big, and they both came in the fourth quarter. Very, very big, very large, and I, I – I mentioned that in my column in today's paper, but I forgot to mention it to you earlier. But they were oh, they were monsters, matter. yeah. And Kevon Lee That's what, was met by right. two defenders on his fumble in the backfield. Um, you know, I mean, he's he has had issues. It was also his first game in the snow. You know, somebody from Florida. But, you know, that's I'm sure he'll say it's no excuse. He lost the ball. And then the fumble on the kickoff, when you still have a chance, to make it a game, yeah. that that really really hurt. Yeah, it really hurt a lot. And uh, the other key part of the game to me was that the second it was not the first drive. You know, it's the first time Penn State's given up a uh, an opening drive touchdown this year. Mm-hmm. It was the second drive, and it went ninety nine yards on yeah. that drive. Yeah, you know that was one we had sat back and went, oh yeah yeah, really? Yeah, it's this defense. Yeah, the defense. Yeah. Even I'm sure you and Jack touched on it. The defense, for some reason, on Saturday, had trouble in third and long and, and fourth downs, and they couldn't get off the field. and And that's an easy thing to say, but it it just they it just seemed like every time, it, it, not every time, obviously, because I think they were nine for eighteen on third down. But it just seemed seemed like too many times the defense allowed a big play and a conversion for Michigan State. Now, again, Michigan State has a really good offense. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to, to... Right, no. To, in fact, to, in fact I'll tell you right now, Thorne's, but, yeah. Thorne's the unsung hero of that offense. Thorne's the unsung yes, hero of that offense. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. He he did a really nice job, especially buying time, you know, using his feet. He did, you know, he, 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 he impressed me a lot. 
So where to from here? I mean, I'm talking about like well, I'm talking about big, big, big picture here. And obviously, there's a bowl game okay. coming up, but like big picture. I mean, they've got a big signing day coming up. You know, you know the guys that they've got verbal are, are locked in with them, which is a r- real big plus. So mm-hmm. uh, you know, when you when you lose four all those games by a total of 21 points, yep, right, which means it's pretty down, to, pretty close to like a play each half. I mean, is this one of you like, whoa, or you sit back and go, okay, guys, let's figure out how we can find that play each half? Which, it, which is the hard. better approach? Right, right. Let, let me let me just say this, Steve, about, you know, I agree. It, it, it's a very, it, it's very tricky. It's a very uh, fine line to walk here. Um, but those numbers, yeah, five losses by 21 points. Um, you're right. It's like, Maybe not one play in Ohio at, at Ohio State, but the other game is one play difference. But Penn yep. State's offense is 82nd in the country in scoring and 82nd yep. in total offense. And right. that, based on James's track record, um, I would not be surprised if there's at least one change on the offensive side of the ball with the staff. I don't know who that is. I don't know anything. But just based on his track record, um, you know, Mike Yersich came in with a lot of fanfare, and I'm not, you know, it's it. He had a rough go of it. He's had a rough go of it this year. Um, obviously, um, you know, it's unlikely that that he would move on, and you know, he because of his track record, it's very impressive. But but uh, I'm going to guess that James. This is not sitting well with James Franklin, the seven and five record, and and the inability to run the football. And uh, I'll be interested in see what happens in the coming um, days and weeks. Yeah, you know, that'll be interesting. It's the one. Now these guys are all out recruiting, so I mean they're mm-hmm. all. They're, I mean you see the list of the places they're going right now. They're all out recruiting just to shore up what they have now, and then of course looking at twenty three. Uh, I have to. I do have to ask you about Michigan and Ohio State because Michigan finally sure. got it done, and and they took it to them. Uh, what did you think about that, and what does it mean in the conference that Michigan is in this spot? I think um, let's put it. Let's just start with the game. Michigan beat up Ohio State physically, yes. and you know Michigan's offense is very different than it has been in previous years. And James Franklin mentioned this a few weeks ago. It's more like the offense Jim Harbaugh ran at Stanford, where it's power football, and he has the people, Harbaugh has the people to do it. And that was was a, a dominant performance Saturday that I don't think anybody saw coming. Um, so let me just say that. And they, they earned that. There was there was nothing fluky about it. That was, okay, that was hats off to them. Uh, as for the conference, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world that Ohio State is not going to be in the Big Ten championship game because um, I think it's good that it's two different teams, Michigan and Iowa, uh, playing on Saturday. Um, I think if I think if Michigan wins, they'll obviously be in the college football playoff. If Iowa wins, I I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but it might mean that the Big Ten is locked out of the playoff. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's good for the conference. I do, I do, because I mean it's ridiculous that Michigan, Ohio State's last loss to a Big Ten East team was five years ago at Beaver Stadium to Penn State. That's just an yeah. incredible run. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is an incredible run. Uh, finally, uh, Lincoln Riley was asked about the LSU job, and he definitively said, "I am not going to LSU." He was right. He is not going to LSU. Uh, how? I, 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 I freely admit, him going to USC that caught me off guard. I did not see that coming. No, that surprised me when I first um, saw the news yesterday. Um, it makes sense in that his path at USC to a conference championship in the college football playoff is not as crowded, is not, and there aren't as many obstacles as there will be 
when Oklahoma moves to the Southeastern Conference. So I get it. Um, it shows you also, Steve, it, it goes back to look at how many recruits at Oklahoma recruits have decommitted already in a matter of what, 24 hours? Yep. It, 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 it tells you a lot. And, um, and, and it does underscore the fact that recruiting is the lifeblood of college football, and that is something that I think too many Penn State fans forget, and that's what James Franklin does exceptionally well. Exactly. One more point about that. What's to keep Caleb Williams from transferring to USC? Nothing. Nothing at all. Exactly. No. Exactly. No. I know. It's it's crazy. It's it. I mean. You know, this is going to really set back Oklahoma, and I guess several of his co- assistant coaches have already gone out there with him, right? So Alex Grinch, the, know, Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator, has gone with him. So yeah, and and Bob Stoops is going to coach the Sooners in the bowl game, which you know, good for him to step in there. But I mean, this is, I mean, Joe Castiglione is a really good athletic director with an excellent reputation, but this has got to set them back for a little bit here. And not only that, they're going into a conference that's much deeper. Yeah, this is going to have to be a. You know, I mean, this there's a lot of dominoes on the SEC thing with Texas and Oklahoma, and everybody overreacted in the summer. They all overreacted. I I, I never get panic. You got to use logic, and it's hurting. It, it it's not the SEC will be deeper in some ways, but all those you know half those teams are going to lose. And Lincoln Riley looked at it and said, I don't want to compete in it. And that tells you a lot. No, and, it, and I can't blame him. I really can't. I mean, that's that's it's not nearly <laughs> – let's put it this way. The Big 12 isn't nearly as strong as the Southeastern Conference and not as not nearly as deep. You're right. And, you know, we don't even know what how the divisions are going to split up, but – I'm, I, I'm, you know, it's obvious that he wanted no part of that. You're right, Steve. I, I just don't. I, I think, I think he made a good decision for himself and for his career. And yep. uh, you know, now I'll be interested to see who Oklahoma hires. Rich, always a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Steve. Take care.